Have you ever considered how snake venom kills you? I wasn't nervous. <laughs> That is so weird, it's really odd. Snakes are thought to cause 100,000 deaths a year, with another half a million left severely disfigured. Their venom contains some of the most powerful bioactive compounds, and this is the venom solution from a saw-scaled viper, Echis ocellatus. It's a hematoxic venom, which means it targets its victim's blood, and it's been provided by venom specialist Nick Casewell from the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine. And he's going to be watching my every move because I'm going to mix some of this with my own blood to show you exactly how it works. This is Dave Cooksey. He's an operating department practitioner, and he's kindly agreed to draw some of my blood for the experiment. So we're gonna need about 10 mil. There's a reason Nick has given me this particular venom today. It's one he studies a lot because the saw scaled viper family are responsible for causing the most snake bite related deaths in the world. I can see which one you're going for. I wasn't nervous. <laughs> you are now. It's amazing how similar the needle looks to the fang of the snakes that we've been looking at. They don't have the most potent venom, and they're not even in the top 10 most venomous snakes in the world, but their small size and their tendency to live near people who can't afford treatment and their aggressive nature makes them a real killer. Okay. Ready? Yeah. A lot of pressure. Yeah. We're drawing now. So there we go. That is so weird, it's really odd. Right, so here you go. This is 10 mil of my fresh blood. And as you can see at the moment, it has a relatively low viscosity. <laughs> but that's all about to change with just a few drops of venom. And terrifyingly, that's all it needs. Here we go. Okay, the venom is doing two things. Firstly, there's something called hemolysis, which is when all of the red blood cells that are coming into contact with the venom are rupturing. And secondly, the venom is initiating something called the clotting cascade. And that's where my blood is beginning to thicken. Ooh, it's beginning to clot. Until eventually I'm left with one mass of congealed jelly blood. Ugh. In the bloodstream of a snake's prey, lots of tiny clots will form, and these then get pumped around the body and become lodged in blood vessels. Here, they cause fatal blockages, causing death by stroke or cardiac arrest. In larger animals, like us, the clotting cascade continues until there are no more clotting components left in the blood. But as the clotting stops, the initial hemolysis, that's the blood rupturing effect, continues, and it could cause a huge internal bleed. And if that was to happen in the brain, the results could be terminal. The saw scaled viper injects its venom into its victim through hollow fangs much like these, whilst other snakes have grooves in their teeth to channel the toxin into its victim. This is actually a fang from a gaboon viper, Vitis gabonica, and they have the longest fangs on record. And it also delivers the most venom from a single snake bite, almost 250 times more than some smaller snakes, and enough to kill around 10 people. But there are loads of different types of venoms, and not all of them attack the victim's blood. Typically, coral and mamba snake venoms are neurotoxic, and this means that they violate the nervous system. The black mamba is one of the most feared snakes in Africa. Its neurotoxic bite shuts down its victim's nervous system, paralyzing it so it can't breathe, and they suffocate. Spitting cobra venoms are myotoxic, causing necrosis at the site of the bite, attacking cardiac muscle and killing by heart attack. Other venoms cause blood pressure to crash, leading to shock and kidney failure. 
The truth is that these chemical cocktails and their effects vary widely from snake to snake. Even within the same species, the venom recipe may differ slightly between individuals, which means finding an anti-venom can be very difficult indeed. Cheap, robust anti-venoms are being developed by scientists like those at the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine. Captive snakes are regularly milked for their venom, which is then diluted and injected into host animals such as horse or sheep and their immune system then synthesizes antibodies, which can be extracted and processed to form the resulting antivenom. But antivenom isn't the only thing to come from venom research. The Brazilian pit viper, Bothrops jararaca, has saved thousands, if not millions of lives. One of the toxins in its venom is a major component of captopril, a treatment for hypertension. Not only does it have the least side effects of any hypertension drug, but it also reduces the risk of diabetes and kidney disease. And it's not just snake venom that has beneficial components. Venom from the death stalker scorpion contains an amino acid peptide called chlorotoxin, which has been pivotal in the treatment and diagnosis of multiple types of cancer. Brain surgeons are able to paint specially modified chlorotoxin onto areas of the brain to identify tumours for accurate removal of the cancerous growth. Even Botox was developed from a natural toxin produced by a bacteria called Clostridium botulinum. And if you thought snake venom was potent, think again, because a single teaspoon of the botulinum toxin could kill the equivalent of 1.2 billion people. For more shocking stats from the natural world, please subscribe to Earth Unplugged. Right, so what are we doing today then? So today, mate, is the Western Diamondback Rattlesnake. One of the most dangerous snakes in the world. But it's actually not the business end I'm keen on today. I want to see that rattle. Okay. But I don't know whether it goes side to side or round and round, or how fast it's shaking it, and really where that sound comes from. But it's a good job for the um, high-speed camera. Well, let's go have a look. By the end of the first post-human year, all human head lice and body lice would go extinct. In fact, all animals that thrive on our existence would struggle. 